The use of green fluorescent proteins in cell biology. Green fluorescent protein and its variants are used as biological markers for proteins, cells and organisms. GFP is found in other marine organisms, however none more researched and referred to in scientific observations than the Aquaria Victoria jellyfish from the northern Atlantic Ocean that emits a green fluorescent light from under its umbrella. This fluorescent light, or bioluminescence, was discovered to be derived from a calcium activated photoprotein called aquarin. Aquarin luminescence is blue, however, when bound to calcium, energy is transferred indirectly to GFP, triggering the release of a fluorescent green light. This reaction occurs without the addition of any external cofactors other than oxygen. GFP is a barrel-like protein composed of 238 amino acids that has become one of the most important tools in the research of the living cell. It is so useful as a biological marker because the energy transfer reaction between aquarin and calcium can be replicated in vitro by exposing GFP to ultraviolet light. The role GFP plays in microbiology lies within its ability to be co-expressed with proteins from any species, making those proteins visible in vitro under UV light without any external cofactors. This is done by cloning the GFP molecule, then using the polymerase chain reaction to generate many fragments. These fragments can then be linked to the genes of proteins of interest, making them visible and allowing them to be followed around a living system. Because GFP does not require the use of a substrate for activation, it rarely has an effect on the activity or mobility of the protein it is expressed into. Its versatility ensures that it has many uses, some of such are. GFP's major function is its use in protein tagging. That is, looking into the living cell using fluorescence microscopy to locate proteins and observe cellular events. This is achieved by cloning the gene of interest, fusing it with GFP, then placing the resulting chimera back into the organism of interest via stable or transient expression. GFP is also used to monitor gene expression in single cells. It is done so by using the GFP gene that is under the control of a promoter of interest and monitoring the level of fluorescence which will directly indicate the level of gene expression in living tissues. The history of GFP. In 1955, Davenport and Nickel reported that the Aquaria Victoria was bioluminescent, meaning it could produce and emit light. But it wasn't until 1962 that Shimamura hypothesised that the extracted bioluminescent substance from the jellyfish was a protein, then discovered almost by accident when he threw the luminescent substance in the sink with some seawater, lighting up the sink with a blue flash, that it was calcium activating the protein, causing it to fluoresce. This protein was named aquarin. And during the purification process, another protein was discovered, one that emitted green fluorescence. It was Moran and Hastings' 1971 study that proved that in vitro bioluminescence reactions occur in other related coelenderates, obelia, a hydroid, and Ranilla, a sea pansy, all of which require a photoprotein and an organic cofactor, in this case, oxygen and calcium, to proceed. They hypothesized that radiationless energy transfer was responsible for this fluorescent emission. It is this photoprotein that they named GFP. In 1974, Maurice et al. purified and crystallized GFP discovering that the Aquaria light organs contain GFP and the protein acarin, and that the GFP protein emits green light due to the transfer of energy from the blue light produced by the aquarium molecule. In 1979, Shimamura identified the GFP protein that contained a fluorescent chromophore formed from a sequence of three amino acids, serine, tyrosine and glycine 
within the protein molecule, thus proving that the chromophore was actually a part of the polypeptide chain, meaning it could be cloned. In 1992, Douglas Prasher identified and cloned the nucleotide sequence of wild-type GFP. This was incredibly important as the population of the organism had dwindled. In 1994, Martin Chalfie expressed its coding sequence in E. coli. In 1995, Roger Sane engineered the wild-type GFP, creating several mutants with different emission wavelengths, allowing them to show in colours other than green, and at the same time, improved thermostability. GFP. How does it work? In order to understand how GFP functions, it is important to first understand how GFP is structured at the molecular level. Here is a 3D model of the structure of GFP. GFP is a polypeptide that consists of 238 amino acids that are strung together. Now these amino acids form a secondary structure made from 5 alpha helixes. Additionally, a beta sheet is made from 11 beta strands, and it is shaped in a barrel-like structure due to hydrogen bonding. At the very center of the GFP structure is the chromophore, which is the short chain of amino acids that are responsible for fluorescence. Looking at the energy spectrum, GFP has the property of having an absorption peak at 395 nanometers and an emission peak at 508 nanometers which means that it absorbs with ultraviolet light and emits green light, respectively. When ultraviolet light collides with the chromophore, it gets absorbed and the chromophore goes into an excited state. However, the chromophore in its excited state is unstable and needs to achieve a lower energy state. It does this by first getting rid of its energy through a photon transfer. The chromophore then fully stabilizes into a lower energy state by emitting a photon of green light. Since the starting and ending states are similar in energy levels, this allows the process to repeat itself. GFP Current Applications GFP is a versatile tool which has a wide variety of applications in the field of biology. But the common trend that links all of GFP's applications is its ability to mark and highlight substances. GFP can be used as a gene marker for gene impact studies. When the specific genes promoter is paired with GFP, the fluorescent effect produced can show us the exact location where the gene is expressed. GFP can be used as a cell marker for developmental biology research. It is added to a promoter specific to cell type which gives information on the cell location, when they divide, and how it develops. GFP can also be used as a selectable marker for pharmaceutical research. It is added to a plasmid, which gives visual confirmation when a microbe receives a genetic insert. So what are the advantages of GFP? GFP allows us to visualize the movement and activities of proteins within cells. One of the key advantages of the method is that it allows us to see the internal action without sacrifice, so no death or destruction for the sake of science. Whilst GFP needs to be carefully selected and placed, SNAP discusses that with the use of peptide tagging, it allows us to view individual proteins or activities. This is allows us to improve our understanding of the roles of different proteins and activities within the cells. Whilst initially an engineered from Aquaria Victoria, GFP was discovered to be usable in a variety of different cells. This has enabled researchers to examine protein function across many cells and many different species with a wide variety of genetic variants now available. And it's not just application to different cells. Zakalo and Heppert found that through mutagenesis and engineering, the flexibility of the tool has been further expanded to apply to an array of emission wavelengths and photophysical properties. Whereas initial GFP, as titled, was a green fluorescent protein, more recent discoveries have given us fluorescent proteins in cyan, blue, yellow, and orange spectral regions. Red fluorescent proteins are still a work in progress. Different excitation wavelengths provide different properties. It allows examination of different proteins and cell functions, affects levels of phototoxicity, and depth of probe into tissue. 
The nature of GFP means that it does not have limitations of some other visualisation methods which use detergents and other chemicals which can affect the functioning of cells and subsequently their results. We've discussed how GFP is a highly flexible tool. Studies have found that whilst many genetic variants have been engineered and are in use, these genetic variants can have application across multiple cells. This increases the usability of GFP in application as a GFP derivative does not have to be developed for each experimental cell type. Where there are advantages, there are always shortcomings. One of the key shortcomings of GFP is that fluorescence resonance transfer relies on a non-radiative distance dependent transfer from donor fluorophore to acceptor fluorophore. This distance is typically around 6 nanometers. This means that there are limitations on the effective thickness or depth of sample, and as thickness increases, the risk of out of focus signals also increases. Because the sensitivity of the distances and the brightness of the fluorescent protein, the availability of instrumentation such as standard laser lines capable of measuring can be limited depending on FP selection. Fluorophore crosstalk can occur when samples have more than one fluorescent marker. Zacklow and the Queensland Brain Institute outlined that when both fluorescent markers are excited and imaged when only targeting one, it can lead to a confused result. The availability of fluorescent proteins and their suitability for cell, protein and experiment is a potential shortcoming. Fluorescent proteins are not easy to obtain, there are a restricted number of suppliers and the supply is further complicated by the fact that to get the best result, a number of studies have identified that a solid understanding of the protein of interest is required to ensure that the right fluorescent protein is selected for the cell environment, temperature, brightness, photostability, phototoxicity and is codon optimised. A GFP unable to generate sufficient brightness due to an unfriendly growth environment may mean that fluorescent is una fluorescence is unable to be observed. SNAP warns that the use of CMV promoter in many GFPs can also lead to overexpression of most cellular proteins, which again affects the results in your experiments. Significant knowledge of the protein of interest, which was called out by Shana, Snap and DuPont, is also needed to know where to place the protein in fusion design and to ensure that fusion does not block normal localization. Similarly, incorrectly placed tags can modify protein function, which also affects results. GFPs are monomers, however they have a tendency to oligomerize. If this is, occurs, it can affect the function of the protein, defeating the purpose of the application of GFP. So whilst there are many advantages, there is also a number of shortcomings which without sufficient care taken during selection can impact results of experiments. So what are the possible future applications for green fluorescent proteins? Recent advances have seen the development of new fluorophores with distinct spectral properties. The most challenging to achieve has been the red spectral range, which still has a lot of undeveloped potential. As mentioned whilst we were discussing advantages, longer wavelengths have the advantage of reduced phototoxicity and an ability to probe deeper into biological tissues. Developing this application would enable us to increase our understanding of cell functioning without negative side effects or destruction of samples. One of the disadvantages of the technology is the highly limited distance over which it's effective, usually about 6 nanometers. By increasing the FP Stokes shift, we can increase separation distance between emission and absorption points, further improving the flexibility of the tool and deepening our understanding of cell biology. Fluorescent protein engineering focuses on changing structure of the FP interior to give rise to variations in spectral characteristics, photostability and many other physical properties. Further developments will increase the usability of GFP and its derivatives. Optical highlighters are another area of development. They involve the generation of chromophores that can be activated either to initiate fluorescence emission from a quiescent state or to be optically converted from one bandwidth to another. Researchers already identified that many GFP tools have applicability to other cell types, other bacteria and other animal families with appropriate adaption. As research and engineering continues, usability is likely to extend to other cell types. So what do all these developments mean? Imagine being able to watch as drugs take effect in cells as viruses transmit, 
to watch a visible glow when something goes astray in the human body, as bacterial pathogens infect cells, as cancer develops. Imagine the increased understanding of disease if we understood the mechanisms by which viruses and bacteria infect the human body. Apply this to agriculture. How much more secure would the world's supply be if we understood mechanisms of drought, how pests or fungi affected healthy plants? The possibilities are endless as the technology continues to develop.